Capsi Podcast Series, Conversations on African Philanthropy. Welcome to another episode on African philanthropy, conversations on African philanthropy with me, Pegingo Simoyo. We are shooting this episode at the margins of the fifth annual African philanthropy conference held here in Victoria Falls at the Elephant Hills Hotel. Uh, Victoria Falls, popularly known as Mosia Tunya, the smoke that thunders. I'm very excited to be joined uh, on, this, on, this, on the sides of this conference by Christelle Kare. I got it right, right? You got it okay, right. so let's start there, Christel. Mm -hmm. Teach us how to pronounce Chikali. I've uh, always thought that people are wrong when they say Chikali. Yes. Where does that come from? Because most of us from the Anglophone mm -hmm. countries mm. will pronounce it as Chikali. Chikali. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, Chikali is supposed to be a Rwandan word and a Rwandan, a Rwandan name. And, and uh, coming from Chinyarwanda, which is our language. So Chinyarwanda is, uh, has a phonetic rule like any other language. So a K followed by I, vowel I or vowel E, would become Che, Che. So it's like there is a Y in between. And so it's Chigari instead of Kigari. Okay. And so my name becomes Karechezi instead of Karekezi. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so That's from now on was Chigali. <laughs> Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I, I dragged you uh, out of the sessions because I wanted to have this opportunity to quickly talk to you about uh, maybe three things. The first is to talk about the work and research that you conducted for CAPSI uh, about a year or two ago, focusing on local philanthropy in Rwanda. Uh, maybe in very short, uh, summarized version. What is the state of philanthropy in Rwanda? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, thank you, Prof. And first of all, I just wanted to say thank you for a very well organized conference, yet uh, another good event that we are seeing here. And uh, yeah, come back to the research. I uh, actually was looking at uh, community philanthropy. Others will talk about philanthropy as we know it in the Western world, and it would be like probably very well set. Uh, yeah. organizations with a board and all that and all that. In our country, in Rwanda, we have something else. Definitely it's giving and giving back to the communities. It can be giving in kinds. Um, it can be giving in knowledge transmitted throughout uh, the generation or any other help or aid to your communities or to your uh, neighbors. So as you well know, about uh, the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994, genocide of Rwanda, some others called it, but we don't like to call it like that. Definitely, um, it was recognized as the genocide against the Tutsi. That's another thing that people would need to learn and uh, mm -hmm. obey. Mm -hmm. um, the country had to reconstruct itself. Everything was torn to the ground. And like we have seen during that period, Everyone else had left, us had left the country. And so we learned, can we go back to our own past and how we used to do things and how we used to help each other and help our communities? So we went back to the roots and we went back to those cultures, to those um, solutions that we, we used to have in our communities to rebuild the country. Yeah. And then um, after just the genocide, something called homegrown solutions was, were institutionalized in, in the country. Uh, you will find things called Umuganda. I don't know if you have heard about Umuganda. Yeah, yeah, it's community yeah. work. Yeah, so let's talk about that because mm -hmm. when I first met you, mm. I had been invited, um, in fact I had responded to a call by the government of Rwanda to develop a, a national strategy on how to engage philanthropy. Mm -hmm. And so I came, you remember, I came with Brian and a colleague and we did that work. So it was at that time that I, I discovered these local 
homegrown, homegrown solutions. solutions. Mm -hmm. And so maybe let's take one by one because yeah. I because I know there are several of them. So mm -hmm. the communities and people yes. who listen to the podcast can understand how the local homegrown solutions have taken Rwanda to an, a next mm -hmm. level. Yes. Yeah. Mm. yeah um, there, there, there are many of those, quite um, uh, kind of maybe more than 10, uh, but we'll talk a few of those that yeah. really has helped the country to, uh, to rebuild itself after that uh, a very sad period. And the first one was around justice. As you would imagine, uh, the perpetrators of the genocide, there were many and the courts as we know them, couldn't handle all the cases. So we went back to traditional courts. Traditional courts means that the people themselves, in traditionally, sit in their gathering, sit their communities, and talk about what happened, who did what, who did not do what, and give the judge themselves. So that really actually helped really speeding up all the cases, mostly, of the genocide uh, perpetrators that were there. So that's one. But the reconstruction then, we had orphans. But the first one, the yes. local name, is mm -hmm. it the Gachacha? Gachacha, Okay, yes. what does that mean in the local language? Gachacha is a, a grass, you know the grass? Yeah. So yeah. it means that people would sit on the grass in the community, and as a gathering, as a community, and talk about issues, and talk about problems, and try to solve the problems. Okay. So they called it uh, after that name. Okay. Yes. Um, yes, the other one I will talk about is Umuganda. Umuganda is a local um, word to mean um, working, working with hands or giving a help to someone, but using hands, working with hands. So they could use this by building houses, building school, building a road. As I was saying, reconstruct means reconstructing schools that were destroyed, reconstructing houses of widows and orphans that were no longer there and probably bringing up new schools, new roads, and all that. So community comes together and bring their hands together and build. Yeah. Bring uh, <laughs> stones, uh, water, and everything that is needed to rebuild, maybe. And uh, this was really used to uh, support widows, build the houses, build the schools, and it was another, yet another really very um, extraordinary um, solution. Uh, there is another one. It's very embedded in our Rwandan culture. We call it Jiringa. Jiringa, it means have a cow. In the Rwandan culture, a cow is something that symbolizes wealth and good health. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that period, all the cows were either taken or killed. And, you know, like a Rwandan cannot live without milk and without a cow. So with that, actually champions by His Excellency the President to give back every Rwandan at least one cow. So it means that every Rwandan has to own a cow. Yeah. So this is system how it works. I'm given a cow and when the cow is given back, I'm supposed to be giving a cow to my neighbor and like that and like that. So Jiringa also has been really, really another um, a solution that has permitted the community, yeah. especially the widows we're talking about, the orphans, to at least go back and have health, have milk, nutrition, and the all that. Yeah. So those are the three I can yeah. talk about. Yeah, yes. so maybe, maybe we, can, we can take maybe one or two of them mm -hmm. just to demonstrate the impact. Mm. So for example, I'm aware that the, the one where you give a cow to the next and so forth, and the cows keep on multiplying. Multiplying, yes. Uh, I read mm -hmm. somewhere a couple of years back that they've helped to, to take uh, a number of children who are in malnutrition out of malnutrition mm. because of the milk, uh, but also food gardens and all of that. So a lot of people, have t a lot of young children have been taken out of malnutrition, mm -hmm. but also from a poverty point of view, sure. a lot of people have been uh, helped by that. So, so that's one example that I've come across, but you yeah. are in a better position yeah. to speak about the impact of at least those three that you have mm -hmm. uh, outlined. Yes, yeah, definitely we can, yeah, staying on uh, the Jiringa, we can also talk about the agriculture um, impact on it because, yeah. you know, with the uh, livestock and um, the, 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 the manure or the, the, the natural manure that is given, definitely the farmers 
are able to put and to produce their own manure and put it in their agricultural produce is really increased with that. Now I think with the impact of all those homegrown solutions, the country is able to count in terms of income. <coughs> those programs are bringing back to the economy. Yeah. I would not say I would not I, I do not have the numbers yeah. uh, just mm -hmm. now, but um, yeah, but it's something that is really um, improved the economy of the country. Yeah, let's go back to the traditional courts, justice courts. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if we have millions and millions of people in prison, what would you have to yeah. feed them? And if they try, they uh, tried by their community members and go back, they charge, they charge something. Maybe you are charged with this, you ask for uh, forgiveness and you go back reintroduced or reintegrated in your community yeah. and you continue working with your community for development yeah. with others. Yeah. Yeah. That means that we have everyone, cohesion, social cohesion is improved and um, enhanced, if I can say. Uh, peace mm -hmm. is built mm -hmm. among the communities who <laughs> killed uh, the, the other people who killed yeah, yeah. The perpetrators. Yeah. perpetrators and um, yeah, and people are working together to build the country. This yeah. is something really yeah. big yeah. and yeah. even more than valued, more than money. Yeah. 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 Mm. Thanks. Uh, I wanted to just get a sense of what philanthropy mm -hmm. looks like. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know whether you are able to, to speak to this, but when, when I came with Brian, probably 2015, 2016, thereabout, mm. we were developing this uh, philanthropy strategy, strategy. For, for the government. And I, I, I haven't really followed up to know whether the, the, that, that strategy has been mm. uh, utilized. I know that it is available on the government's website, mm. but I don't know the extent to which government is driving strongly uh, the engagement of, uh, of philanthropy, both local mm. and international. Mm. What I would say is uh, uh, these homegrown solutions have really taken a shape yeah as part of the philanthropy strategy that you have seen yeah, yeah. yes definitely there is that form of philanthropy where many many organizations and foundations owned by Rwandan themselves working for Rwandan yeah, yeah. people ha were born and they are now uh, strongly working yeah, towards yeah, uh, yeah. bringing solutions to the people yeah. but also these solutions were institutionalized in the way that they are even accepted some of them are even registered with uh, UNESCO as yeah as part of the world um, uh, patrimony that other people come and learn from. Actually, we have uh, now an agency that is, is supposed to be uh, coordinating people from different countries okay. come and learn from these solutions. Yeah. How did yeah. you Rwandan yeah. people did this? How are you doing yeah. it? How yeah. did you rebuild the country with extraordinary uh, image of a country that we have now yeah. after yeah. 30 years yeah. of um, of the building, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, and I mean I must say that mm. in the last couple of years that I've been following developments in in Rwanda, uh, I'm aware that lots of philanthropic conferences actually take place there. Mm. There's there's also been a, a movement of philanthropic foundations to be located uh, in Chikali. A, a, a big example is the mm. Mastercard Foundation, mm -hmm. which is one of the biggest foundations globally yes. and um, in Africa. And for them to choose Chikali means that there's something that we need to pay attention to. Mm. Um, so that's important. And I think if you want to comment on that, you could comment on it. But mm. I, want, I also wanted to ask you, maybe we pivot a bit to why um, you are here attending mm. the fifth uh, annual philanthropy conference, but under the banner of BRAC. Mm. Maybe you talk a bit about, you know, BRAC and what it does, but more specifically what it's doing. Mm. in Rwanda mm -hmm. for, and for the Rwandan people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, I'm attending this conference because um, probably part of it, my work, but part of it because of, uh, you know, your presence yes, and yes. your invite uh, to this conference. Um, my work is supporting my organization to mobilize resources and partnerships that is needed to build and supporting communities we work with. Um, I'm working with eight countries in Africa, including Rwanda. So our organization is working to empower women and youth to build their life and get out of poverty. And one of the biggest approach that we use is, is through um, ultra poor graduation program or approach mm. that has been easily known actually by, Bra 
uh, for BRAC and by BRAC, by so many other organizations that are coming to learn from us. So the Women uh, Empowerment, Youth uh, Empowerment is taking that approach, adding uh, financial inclusion, social inclusion, and all that together, we are able to lift people and youth and women out of poverty. And actually all this approach has been tested to be sustainable for more than seven years. Yeah. Someone who is taking that approach for two years can be able to sustain uh, the state they have been into for more than seven years. So um, coming here is to be able to showcase and you know, like telling people what we do at BRAC, um, finding if there are people who are uh, able and um, ready to collaborate with us and work with us. Uh, definitely partners, donors, philanthropic uh, organizations, because we believe that in the collaborations together, we are able to showcase definitely the, the, the proven approaches yeah. Yeah. and they can be at scale with our strong collaboration. So this yeah. is partly or the main uh, reason I am attending this conference. Yeah. 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 And yeah. and prior to that, you were with Water Aid, right? Sure. And uh, prior to that, with uh, Action, Action Aid. Aid. Mm -hmm. um, what what brought you to the to this sector? I mean, others will call it the development sector, <laughs> others the non-profit sector. But what 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 mm. do you think was the that point for mm. you mm. that made you to stay in this sector? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I joined this sector uh, when I was <laughs> very young, straight from university. Yeah, and yeah. then I think that then we was with ActionAid, which really shaped me into the woman I became, uh, to uh, be thinking about issues of women, issues of girls that really are strong to my heart. And uh, I think most of the organizations that I've joined, I feel that I have something to offer, is my skills and my knowledge around how can we can mobilize resources and partnerships to be able to bring projects that are of impact yeah. to our communities, to the young women, to the girls that we're working with. So that kept me going. Yeah. Uh, apart yeah. from that, I've been able to um, sit on different boards of women organizations, young women organizations in my country in Rwanda, and other advisory boards uh, across yeah. to just yeah. advise yeah. on how we can yeah. do that. Yeah. Mm. Okay, mm. so I think um, because of the time constraints, I would want to talk more and more, but maybe <laughs> when we have time, maybe yeah. in Chigali or somewhere, mm -hmm. we can talk. Because yeah, I don't, don't, I don't come think back home. Yeah, and, and I also yes, don't think it's difficult to, to locate you because mm -hmm. one time I was joking in Chigali. I saw you. And then you sent me a you send me a text and said, Was that you? <laughs> <laughs> so that means it would be easy to locate you. I'm very sure I'm very yeah. sure you're caught yeah. by surprise. Yeah, yeah yes. I was. I yes, was, I yes. Was. yes. Yeah. But to mm -hmm. end this conversation, mm -hmm. who is Christel? Um, Christelle is um, a mother of two sons, uh, Klaus and Kyle, and um, I'm very passionate about women empowerment and all um, programs or maybe um, solutions that we can bring so that women and girls can lift them out yeah. of injustice, poverty, and, you know, be able to have a voice and participate in their communities, in their community development. So that's me. Um, apart from that, I'm a fan, fan woman. I like fun and uh, I like reading uh, books. Yeah. I like, yeah. Yeah, I like hearing and understanding what's happening in the whole world, in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then professionally, what's your background? Um, yes, I'm um, a development worker, if I can say, and, yeah. but I grew, I grew a different background in terms of education, uh, business development, um, project management, but mainly I've built my career around fundraising, business development, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. resource mobilization, yeah. partnership building. That's kind of um, the career that yeah, I've been over yeah. probably now 20 years. Yeah. 20 yeah, years. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So far, what's your take? I mean, uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm ending now. What's your take on what you've been hearing in the conference? Are there any yes. themes that are emerging for you mm -hmm. that you want to take back to Rwanda mm. as a country, mm. the philanthropic sector there as a, mm. as, a, as a big sector, but also to your own organization? Yes, um, yeah. The take that I would, I think I've now uh, listened and taken home 
is the collaboration. You know, we talked about the collaborative funding, we talked about how can we come together, we talked about the Global North, the Global South. All this is mean yeah. we needed to collaborate. Yeah. Yeah. We need to collaborate together. I did not attend the academy conference, uh, yeah. conference yeah. the two days, but I'm very sure that with also the academic side, yeah. if we come in together, collaborate, bring in those stories, bring yeah. those data yeah. that we need to build the story, uh, or to build, uh, yeah, to build the momentum of what we're doing, all together collaborative yeah. is, is yeah. very, very yeah. important. Yeah. So I think that's what I'm taking forward, partnerships, collaborating together, because, I mean, everyone was talking about one donor giving here, the other donor giving here, the other yeah. philanthropy yeah. giving yeah. here, yeah. but yeah. this probably is not having impact as we wish it to have. Yeah. So everyone, yeah. once they come together, we will be able to have yeah. a yeah. big impact and uh, yeah move move the world as they say yeah <laughs> yeah yes. thank yeah. you all right thank mm. you so much thank mm. you so much christelle i think because we have to get going you want to get ready for the gala dinner <laughs> i also want to see if i can also get myself ready mm. uh, thank you so much thank uh, you this was great thank you so much so that was christelle karakechi um joining us here in the margins of our conference taking place in victoria falls uh, but currently working uh, for Prague and with Prague in Rwanda. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to the CAPSI podcast series, Conversations on African Philanthropy.